Welcome to my second tutorial for My Memory Suite digital scrapbooking software by Polaroid. I'm Leslie, also known as Tuke of the Pink Tuke Craft Blog, and in this second tutorial we're going to see how you can add your own content, whether it's graphics or images you've made yourself, or digital scrapbooking freebies created by others, into the My Memory Suite software. If you missed my introductory tutorial that gives you a tour of My Memory Suite features and capabilities, be sure to check it out on my blog, craftblog.pinktuke.com. So last time I mentioned that one of the great things about My Memory Suite is that you're able to add your own content. Sure, this quick page here that you see of my dog is great, but it was created by somebody else, and there's only so many times I can use these graphics or this page. If I run out of things to use, which will take you a while since the software comes with so much preloaded content, um, I'll want to be able to add on to it without you know breaking the bank and um, make it easy for me. So. Um, like what I mentioned, the software comes preloaded with lots of content, but what I like the most is that you're able to add new things to it constantly, so your creativity and abilities with the software are endless. It doesn't stop when you run out of preloaded content. So I'm going to show you the process from beginning to end, how and where to add additional content, such as freebie content, for use within My Memory Suite. I'm going to close out of My Memory Suite while I do this, because new items you add to the software's directories won't show up if the software is open when you add it, until you restart the program. So to make things easier, I'm just going to close it now, and I'll restart it when I'm done adding the new content. So here in this folder, this is my general download folder, um, I've got for you a freebie here, which is one that I created myself, and it's called the Hoosier State, and it's the first part of my little freebie set. So when I download a freebie from someone else, it usually comes as a zip file and you've got several different programs you can use to unzip those files. Um, I use WinRAR, you can also use WinZip. Um, both have free versions, I believe. So um, I'm going to double click here, and I'm going to open up the file that I downloaded that is full of freebies. And you can see all the freebies here. I'm just going to grab all of them, and I'm going to go ahead and just stick them somewhere in my downloads folder. So whatever your choice is, is, you know, whatever you use to unzip your files, do that. And now you'll see I've got a folder here with the freebies in it. So let's check a look at that. Okay, so in here are all the freebies that came with this particular kit. As you can see, there are a few background papers. There are also um, some embellishments as well. So what I'm going to have you do is open up another Explorer window here. And let's go take a look at the My Memory Suite directory first. Go where you have My Memory Suite installed. For me, it's in C, Program Files, My Memory Suite. So go in there, and you're going to want to click on Components. And inside of Components is where you see the main files that you need. You have Backgrounds and Embellishments, and these are the two we're going to deal with most. Um, if you click on Backgrounds, you get Paper, Texture, and Theme. Now if you remember, within the software, those choices were available to you too. Paper was the plain paper that had like decorative um, designs on it that came in the different colors and it was preloaded content by My Memory Suite. Texture was the same thing. It was the stone, the recycled, or the corrugated textures that came in different colors. And then there was Theme. Now Theme is where you can add your additional content. So let's click on Theme. And as you can see, I've added a lot of additional content. I've downloaded a lot of great freebies from uh, wonderful designers out there, and you can do the same. So if you go into the backgrounds and you go into theme, here's where you can create a new folder. So create a new folder, new folder, and give it a name. I'm going to call it Hoosier State. So now I have, and where did it go? It's up here. Uh, Hoosier State. So I just created this folder called Hoosier State. And inside of Hoosier State, obviously it's empty, and because this is the background section, I'm going to go back here where I unzipped the Hoosier State, and I'm going to grab the backgrounds, one, two, three, four. I'm going to cut those, and I'm going to go place them into this new folder that I created. So I'm going to put them here. So now if you notice, the backgrounds that I created from the Hoosier State are in the backgrounds directory of my memory suite. So that means that these four papers are now available to me within the software because it's in the software's directories. Now let's go back, back out to the components section. Now let's go to embellishments. So now go into the embellishments directory and you'll see a lot of different choices. Some of this stuff is already preloaded content. A few things I've added myself. You can add folders wherever you'd like. I just add them to the most um, 
the one that makes the most sense to me. So in the embellishments um, directory, you've got one called designer embellishments. And that was one that I kind of skipped out on when we were um, going through the first tutorial. I kind of avoided the designer pages and the designer um, embellishments because this is where I add um, my other content, my new additional content. There's already going to be a few things in here that's preloaded, um, such as the, the backgrounds and things of um, the uh, tutorial page that I made, scrapbook that I made with you in the first tutorial. Some of those elements and pages are, are from the designer set. So come into designer and again you're going to see that I've added a lot of content myself. So every time I have new things to add that are embellishments I add a new folder. So I do the same thing. Let's make a new folder and again I'm gonna call it Hoosier State. Okay and Hoosier State's right here go into the Hoosier State, obviously it's empty, come over here and grab all of the elements that are from the Hoosier State. And I'm going to cut those and go put those in here. And so now all these embellishments are within the, the software's directories under the designer Hoosier State. So when I'm in the software, when I go to add an embellishment, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, when I go in and I add an embellishment, I'm going to choose a designer embellishment, which will take me into this directory, and then I'm going to choose the Hoosier State, and then all of these will come up for me to choose from to add to my page. Um, I would like to make another little note here. Something that I found that is very easy um, to do is when you download freebies from others, usually the terms of use are included, just like I have here. Um, and usually your terms of use that you, when you download from someone else, it says, you know, if you post this somewhere online or you use it somewhere online and you share it, you need to be able to give credit. Um, if you're just printing it for your own personal use, obviously you don't. But I like to share mine on scrapbook.com. Um, and I like to post them up on my own website. So it's good to, to know who to give credit to in that situation. So I usually will um, either copy the terms of use and put them into either the embellishment or the background um, directory as well. You obviously can't use those within my memory suite, but they'll just be in here so that if I need to remember who to give credit to, I can run into this directory and I can pull up the terms of use quickly to see who it is that I need to give credit to. Um, also something else that I would like to suggest to you, I'm going to go back to where I had that download. Um, the Hoosier State zip file that's here, um, because you've gone and you've added these things to the directories, um, they're here now, but if for whatever reason your computer crashed or you had to reinstall My Memory Suite from scratch later, um, you will lose all the freebies that you've added unless you make a backup. So what I do is, yes, I unzip and I, you know here's where I unzipped everything and I moved all the files into new places in the directory. But then I take the original zip file as it is and I take that and I put it into a separate directory completely separate from my memory suite. And then I back that up regularly, like once a month or once every couple months, depends on how many I've got. So I'm gonna take this and I just put this out here to show you as an example. I created a folder out here that I call extras that I've downloaded and in here I'm just gonna put that back up and it's safe it's separate from my memory suite and I'll just remember you know once a month once every couple months I'm going to back this up and burn this folder to a CD um, so that I don't lose these things that way if I ever have to um, reinstall my memory suite I can just go to my backup disks and pull out these extras that I've downloaded and I can unzip them and reinstall them to the programs directories so now you can see um, that I've added these things to the programs directory so I'm going to open up my memory suite again and remember if you add those things while mem my memory suite is open you're gonna have to restart the program I'll pull up our tutorial album from the first tutorial and let's say I want to add a stalk of corn here um, to my page so go to embellishments add an embellishment the more you add, the longer it takes to load all this up, I've found. But that's okay. I've got a lot of great things to choose from. So my designer embellishments are here. And I would double, double click here. And all those things, if you look over here, let's look back at this directory. And we'll view it as a list. So all these things that I've added myself are here. And th they're also listed here now. So I'm accessing that directory of the software. And I'm going to look for Hoosier State. 
let's see, who's your state is right here. I just added this. Now you can see it's available to me in the software. And here we go. Here are all the embellishments that I just added from that freebie kit. So, so if I wanted to add a stock of corn, I could choose a piece of corn here, click apply, just like we did in the first tutorial. And here's my stock of corn from the Hoosier State freebie. I can resize it just like you can do with anything else in the software. Um, I can give it a drop shadow if I want, um, do whatever I want to do with it. I can rotate it a little bit if I want, that sort of thing. So that's how you can add your embellishments. Now, backgrounds were put into a different section of the software's directories. Um, let's show you how to do that. If you go into backgrounds and if you choose designer template, all of my the things that I've added before are going to be here. Um, once again, this is the same thing as if we were here in the backgrounds theme section. All these things here are the same things you're going to see here. Um, so the same thing. Let's go find Hoosier State again right here. Open that up and here are the papers that came with the freebie kit. So I could choose one of these whichever one I wanted to use. Um, let's use the first one and just say OK and it will add that background. So you can see how from beginning to end I added, I unzipped a file that had freebies in it, um, backgrounds, um, embellishments, and I extracted those and then I went and put them and created new directories for them within the My Memory Suite so software um, directories. And now I'm able to access those backgrounds and those embellishments within the software. Um, which is really, really handy. So you can do this with anything. Anytime you want to add new things, you can just go into the My Memory Suite directory and you can make a new folder. Um, you'd want to put new backgrounds into the theme directory, um, new embellishments. Um, with embellishments, you can come in here and you can add, um, you can add them directly here. Um, if they're a generic sort of thing, for example, buttons are generic or the brads are generic, um, you can add add the directory here, add a new folder for those here, or um, like a, for example I created a folder I call random, random by Leslie, um, and just random embellishments and things that I um, don't really have a theme for or don't really have a whole directory for, I just throw them all in here. Um, but otherwise you're going to want to go into designer embellishments and add a whole new folder for whatever the kit is called and add those there. Um, if you had an alphabet, sometimes you download freebies that come with a whole alphabet. Um, if you have an alphabet, if you go into ABC123 here, um, it might just be called alpha. I think I renamed that to ABC123 to keep it at the top. Um, so you can just go in here and add your new alphabets the same way that you would add any embellishments or backgrounds. Just create a new folder, give it a name, and toss your, um, your alpha files in there. Um, an example of an alpha file, it would look like this perhaps. Um, this is a knit and stitch embroidery that I gave away um, a while back on my blog. Um, don't mind these little thumb files. These files are um, created by the software. The first time that you access this um, within My Memory Suite, it'll create a little thumb file so that um, the software has little thumbnails to use. So um, this is an example of an alpha. So if you download an alpha created by someone else, um, you can add those as well. And I add those in my embellishments directory as well. So um, that's how you can add your alphas. And I would just like to show one last little thing here. Um, I mentioned that you can add freebies created by others, but that's not all that you can do. Um, my husband and I went to a concert back in March, and if I were doing a traditional scrapbook page, I would take this uh, concert ticket stub and I would want to paste it onto you know, a scrapbook page. But since I'm doing all my scrapbooking digitally these days, uh, what I did instead is I scanned our ticket and I saved it as a JPEG, as an image file, on my hard drive here. And because it's an image file, it doesn't matter um, what image file it is. It could be clip art off the internet. It could be something that you scan. Um, so if you wanted to scan things like a concert ticket or a movie stub or um, a napkin from your friend's wedding or um, a business card of someone um, that you would, for whatever reason, want to put into a scrapbook, and you would do it traditionally, um, you can scan it with a scanner, save it as an image file, and you can do the same thing. You can add it to the software's directories, um, just like we did with the other embellishment and background and alpha files. So I'm going to take this concert ticket, and I'm going to go and I'm going to create a new directory. So in my embellishments directory, um, you can just create a new directory and call it something like um, 
scanned items for example so I'll create a new folder and call it scanned and in here I will drop my concert ticket and now that it's here in the software's directories in the embellishments directory um, in its own little thing here scanned so from now on if I scan new items that I want to use in the software I'll throw them in here um, and now I'm gonna exit out of my memory suite real quick and then restart it for you just to show you what that looks like so there's the limitations are are gone any image files at all whether you find them online as clip art or you scan them yourself you can add them to your page so if I wanted to add that movie or that movie that concert ticket um, I can add it the same way I did everything else. Go to Add Embellishment. It'll pull up um, all of my directories. And I just saved that in the main embellishment directory. And I saved it in something called Scanned. So here we go. Click on Scanned. And here's my concert ticket. Click on that and apply it. And now my concert ticket is right here in the software. And I can move it around. I can put it wherever I want. I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. Uh, rotate it. Just like anything else. So now... Um, the things that you might normally scrap traditionally and you think you're limited by doing digital, you're not. If you can scan it, you can put it into your um, digital scrapbooking pages just like you would if you're creating a traditional scrapbook. So um, that's all I've got for you today. Um, each new tutorial is going to build on previous ones and assume that you know how to do or are familiar with certain features already explained in a former tutorial, so be sure that you watch them all. Uh, my goal is for you to be familiar enough with the software at the end of the tutorial series to really jump right into the program confidently once you get it. Or, if you've already got the software, maybe it'll teach you a few new tricks to use um, to help you get the most out of it. I have at least three more tutorials on the way, and of course I'm always available to help by answering any questions in case things aren't clear. My email is craftblog at pinktook.com, and the blog is pink or craftblog.pinktook.com, and I'm open to any suggestions for future tutorials if there's something you need more clarification on. For example, if you're wondering, can my memory suite do this, or can my memory suite do that? Um, if you send me an email, I can uh, do a tutorial and show you how to do it. Um, so yeah, be sure to let me know if I can help you out in any way. And that's it for today's tutorial. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Take care.